Mark Levin and Jennifer Flackett, you are two of the executive producers of the Netflix animated show Big Mouth. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of this show is usually associated with, you know, creator Nick Kroll and Andrew Goldberg. How did you come to be part of this creative team that helped launch this show? Well, we we all created it together, um, and we we all have very deep relationships with one another. And Nick and Andrew grew up together. They met in uh, first grade, I think. Um, Jen and I met uh, about thirty years ago. We've been married for yes, about, we married uh, for for much of that. And um, and then Andrew, um, we met in the year two thousand. Um, he was a graduate student at UCLA, and we were looking for an assistant at the time. And he came into our life and started working as our assistant back uh, twenty one years ago. Um, and through that, we became great friends. Um, we were at the time working pretty much in film. Um, and hadn't done animation yet, he went on and became a Seth MacFarlane's assistant and then went on to work on Family Guy. And um, around 2014 or so, we started collaborating on some projects together. And, um, and in 2015, um, we said, what are we gonna do next? What should we do next? And he came up with this, I uh, had this idea called Bar Mitzvah Boys. And it was gonna be about the, um, the boys that he went to Jewish day school with. Uh, and we had thought about that. We were like, oh, that yeah. sounds kind of okay. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure it's exactly what we should be doing. It was an animated show. Um, and we realized that the stories that he was telling were, were te stories about him and Nick growing up together. We got to know Nick a little bit too. We all, um, we, our family happened to take a trip to Mexico City and Nick was also taking a trip to Mexico City around 2014, around that time. And uh, we decided we were all going to um, meet in Mexico City and have a meal. And then Nick was all alone there, and he became the honorary kind of fourth member of our family, fifth member of our family. And you know, when you travel with someone, that's like, you know, that's very deep, deep friendship very, very quickly. Um, so we got to know Quick, uh, Nick quite well there. And shortly after that, we said, let's not, let's take that time of life. But let's focus on puberty. Let's not do it just about the boys at Jewish Day School, but do it at a public school with boys and girls, and really focus on puberty. And um, and and that kind of gave birth to it. We all um, then um, you know made an animatic and 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 shared it with a few different uh, networks. And Netflix um, gave us an order to to make the first season, and there there we went. So the show all it took an amazing step this past season uh, by adding a, a trans character to the show and had that character, Natalie, voiced by uh, actual trans actress Josie Toda. And I was wondering, what was the process like of creating and casting this character? Well, well the we, had, you know, we've got we're the at that time, we had kids who were in high school. And so we were seeing more, we were just becoming more and more aware of trans kids in our orbit and in our kids' orbit. And it felt like someone that we should really, just representation that we should have in Big Mouth. So we kind of said like, is there a way to use camp as a real kind of starting point here? So we could really like kind of meet a whole new group of kids. And we brought in Patty Harrison as a writer on that show um, and spoke with a lot of trans kids, a lot of our friends' friends. Um, and then we, you know, we were doing our casting process and we knew it was going to be a trans actress. That was never, ever in doubt. And Josie was, is so special. And so it was very easy, you know, it, it, you know, there are those things that are, you know, that come out quickly and that was one of them you know we got very lucky there one of the things that i think the show does so well is the way is not just the people that it gets that the show gets as uh guest performers but also in how you use them one of the few a couple that come to mind are like john ham as a scallop or uh paul giamatti as a literal piece of poop uh, yes yes <laughs> which, they're oh, so great yes <laughs> Just lovely, uh, but which for for each of you, which which guest appearance have been your personal favorites so far? Wow, there have been so many. Um, 
and who did well, Kristen Wiig is the vagina. Chris, Chris, is, yes, like that to us was, you know, I mean, and every year we have her back because she's so wonderful, and we feel that her representation of the vagina could not be better. Mm -hmm. um, and every time she comes, we, you know, we get such a thrill. And really, mm -hmm. all of our guest cast, we feel so incredibly lucky. I, I think about Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen and John Oliver both yeah. at camp. That was pretty amazing to have them both there. Um, uh, Paul Giamatti was very special. We were like, we can't believe we got him for that. That right. was very, that was amazing. Tandy Newton uh, yes. as uh, a hormone monstrous is awesome. Um, it's a great thing about animation is that it, we can, um, you know, get people to devote relatively little time and make a really big contribution to the show. Um, and and Nick um, is so loved and respected in the comedy world that he's able to, in a lot of instances, like with Seth or John Oliver, just text them and say, hey, would you be interested in doing this? And, and, and it opens a lot of doors for the show. And I love that you brought up uh, Kristen Wiig because uh, I love how perky she makes that, the vagina. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, like, oh hey, hey, hey. You know, yes. Great invitation. Yes, but I, 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 but you also had, um, you know, the the voice acting talent is so rich on the show, and uh, I it fi finally got some great recognition this past September when Maya Rudolph won the character uh, voiceover performance Emmy. Uh, uh, what was that? You know, what was what was the what was y'all's reaction to that when when that happened? It was so funny. You know, we we were uh, recording that day with Maya. Uh, and it was all virtual this year, of course, uh, because of, uh, you know, what happened in 2020. Um, and uh, I like, we it, dare not speak. I'm not going to say the, 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 Yes, I'm not going to give COVID the respect. Um, <laughs> but no, the uh, um, then um, she, it was, they spread the awards out over several different nights. Um, and they uh, and there were no ceremonies. And Maya actually was nominated for. Um, Three uh, awards this year, two, something like that. Two. She won two. She was nominated for but three. But she won ours first. She won ours first. We're she her won first Emmy. First. We're her yeah. first Emmy. And um, but we um, immediately uh, uh, texted Maya. Uh, you won the Emmy. It's amazing. <laughs> She's like, oh, I forgot it was tonight. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't actually know, and it was sad. I mean, it's great for her. She's very, very. She happy. was but, very thrilled. Um, she but, really. Uh, was. You know, I hope she has an opportunity to accept one in person yes. sometime. Um, yes. But she is so deserving. I mean, that is an iconic role, and she um, just is, gets funnier and funnier and makes it more rich and more complex all the time. And uh, one of the other interesting things with your with the cast that happened recently was uh, uh, Ayo uh, Edebiri. I hope I'm saying that name uh, correctly. Ayo, uh, Ayo, Ayo. yeah. Uh, I uh, recently took over voicing Missy from uh, Jenny Slate. Uh, what has it been like to see her come into her own as Missy? Well, it's been great. It's been a great experience for the show. It's been, you know, um, it really uh, was a moment in the show uh, where we, and it's been something we've been talking about a lot um, with Jenny, especially early uh, as the character evolved, where we were trying to explore the character's racial identity more. And to be able to do it authentically, the character of Missy is biracial, has, has a white mother and black father, and though is black. And uh, um, to be able to, and as that character got deeper into her journey of kind of identifying with her blackness, um, we really, led by Jenny Slade, um, realized that we really need to authentically tell this with a black actress. and. Um, Io uh, had been a writer on the show, though, um, and we always thought, oh, she had Missy qualities, but we went through a really thorough casting process. I think 80 different auditions were submitted, not only from actors that we knew, but um, people on Twitter were submitting, and uh, a whole bunch of people you know, were ha already loved and identified with the role. Um, but when Io, um, through that process, really won the role, and now um, we get a chance to bring her comic instincts to it. And she has considerable comic chops and is great at improv as well as just portraying the character. So uh, it's been, uh, knock wood, a great transition and it opens up just the next phase of stories for the character. And uh, lastly, I just uh, which, do you know which episode from season four you plan to submit uh, for Emmy consideration this year? 
Well, we were just discussing that. Yeah. Um, I think that we've decided to go with our first episode of season four, which is called The New Me. Yeah, that's right? the, yeah, that, that's, it. yes, it yes. is. It's an episode that introduces the Natalie, Natalie. character and um, it deals with just the trans representation and 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 just what um, it's a very funny episode as well and um, uh, we think that that's a great a great way to 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 kind of introduce people to season four of Big Mom. All right. Well, Mark and Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you back for our panel in a little bit.